Welcome to Searching the Archives Catalog, a tutorial. When you've completed this tutorial, you'll know how to use appropriate, efficient, and effective search strategies to locate primary sources in the Archives Catalog at the University of Louisville. The Archives Catalog helps you locate collections that may help you answer your research question, and it prepares you for your visit to the Archives and Special Collections Reading Room or to ask us follow-up reference questions. The easiest way to get started is to go to the Archives and Special Collections homepage, which you can access off the University Library's homepage. You can also access it directly at Archives Catalog, that's one word, dot library dot louisville dot edu. On our homepage, if you click on the Collections tab, you can enter your search terms directly in the Search the Archives Catalog search box. I'm going to give you some tips for happier searching. So first of all, like most databases, the Archives Catalog has a wildcard symbol that tells the system anything goes after this point. In the case of the Archives Catalog, it's an asterisk. So for example, if you were interested in the history of journalism in Louisville, you could just enter journalists with an asterisk. And that gets results uh, that contain journalist, journalists, or journalism. So this helps to broaden your search. I'm going to open up a new search for this next tip by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. So this next search tip is uh, maybe a little surprising. Um, unlike most search engines, the archives catalog assumes that when you enter two or more words, you are looking for any one of them. So, for example, if you're searching the civil rights, researching the civil rights movement in Louisville and you enter civil rights, you get almost 3,000 results. However, because the system is assuming you want either of those words, you're actually getting results that relate to civil engineering as well as civil rights. Probably not what you're interested in. So to tell the catalog that you want both of the words, you have a few options. If you're interested specifically in civil rights as a phrase, you want it that specific way, you can enclose it in quotes. If you just want to search for both of those words, but you don't care about the order, you don't care if there are words between them, what have you, so it's a broader search, you can either enter the word and between all of your search terms, or you can enter your search terms on different lines of a multi-part search. The results for these last two cases will be the same. So let's say you want to refine your results further. This is still a substantial number of results to go through. So you can filter your results further by applying filters along the right-hand side. First, you can enter additional search terms by entering them in the search within results box. So for example, if you wanted to find out more about specifically how the Bradens, Jim and Ann Braden, had been involved, you could just enter the search term Braden. Essentially what you're doing is adding that term to your pre-existing search. So there are 57 results that include uh, the word Braden. You can remove the filter by clicking on the X. Other ways, you, other filters that you can apply include subjects uh, and names of people and organizations. So for example, uh, as you look through this list, you might say, oh, you know, it might be really interesting to look at how University of Louisville faculty engaged with or reacted to the civil rights movement. So if you click on this subject heading, you get a smaller results list of four that includes three sets of papers from individual U of L faculty members. So this can be a good way to refine your actual research topic in some cases. So the other part of working with the archives catalog is understanding what these results are. So let's just go through this. 
At the top of your results list will be descriptions of collections that are fully processed. That means they are fully described and ready for you to use. These are likely to be the strongest possibilities for you because they tend to be the biggest collections and they are the easiest to find your way through because they are so well described. You can immediately learn a little more about these collections and the parts of the descriptions that are visible in the list. These entries link to a finding aid, which is a more detailed description of the collection. If you're not familiar with finding aids, be sure to check out our tutorial, Exploring the Mysteries of Finding Aids, because they really are your best friend in archival research. Further down the list, you might see entries like this that are identified as unprocessed. To find more about these collections, you click on them, and then you'll see a brief description of the collection. Some of these collections may be open to researchers. It's worthwhile to follow up with us and ask if you think there could be material in one of these collections that would help you. Moving further down the list, you might see entries like this. This is an individual file title, a folder title within a box. You can see at the bottom of these entries what collection they're part of, and you can see toward the top, right under the title, um, what box number they're in, and sometimes what their file number is. Generally speaking, a collection with a substantial amount of relevant material will show up higher in the list. What you're seeing here are collections that have individual folders that are relevant. It might be worth taking a look, but you'll probably find the best material toward the top of the list. I hope this introduction and these tips are helpful to you as you do your archival research with us. If you have follow-up questions, don't hesitate to contact us.